Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to another Adobe XD Masterclass. My name is Howard Pinsky, Senior XD Evangelist here at Adobe. Hope you're all doing well on this Friday afternoon. I can't currently see the chat. Behance is down on my end. Seems to be fine for other people, but I can't see chat. So if you are tuning in live, hope you're well. Definitely throw your name in the chat. Let us know who you are and where, to, where you're tuning in from. Eventually, chat will load for me. But until then, Masterclass number 98, two away from the big 100. And I do have uh, Slack open, so if anyone's wa any of the moderators are watching and something goes wrong, just let me know in, the in Slack, and I will take a look at that. All right, so let's go ahead and hop over to my screen, and we are going to get going today for Masterclass number 98. Now, if any of you have been following the Apple News, WWDC took place just a few weeks ago, and along with a lot of updates to iOS and Mac OS and iPad OS and all the different OSs, they previewed, a bit of a brief preview, the new CarPlay experience that will be launching apparently in late 2023, potentially, maybe earlier, but probably based on the way Apple releases software, it's usually later in the year. And a lot of it really caught my eye. You know, some of it is definitely a little bit different for car interfaces. But many of you reached out and said, you know, how do we create something like this in XD? Because it's possible that, you know, these elements and these guidelines for car OS will not be available until 2023. And some of you want to get going and starting to design some of this now so you can prepare. Maybe some of you are working for some of these big car manufacturers, right? So we're going to do that today. And I also released a video on YouTube on how to design one of the gauges in Adobe XD. So if you want a very quick way of designing something like that, and you don't want to sit through this live stream, sometimes I don't blame you, you can definitely go to youtube.com slash Howard Pinsky and check that out. I'm going to refresh Behance one more time just to see if chat is loading for me. It is not. That's bizarre. Anyways, it'll get all right, so we're going to get going. I'm going to go ahead and hop over to Adobe XD, and we're going to start. So here's the tricky part. What size do we start with, right? We have a lot of different presets in XD from iPhones to pixels to iPads, web, Instagram stories, probably not that, but we have a lot of different pre presets. The problem is, as you can see from this screenshot here, Every car display is going to be different, right? We have very long car displays. We have slightly long car displays. Some of them are very small. Some of them focus on very specific elements. So I think for this particular masterclass, we're not going to design focused on one particular car screen. We're basically going to just create an artboard and we're going to go crazy. We're just going to start creating some of these elements. And if you watch the WWDC keynote, somewhere, you know, I don't know when it was, probably about like 40 minutes in or 30 minutes in, they showed off a bunch of different screens. So you can definitely go through and grab some of those screenshots and follow along if you want to. So we're going to start with, let's say a 1920 by 1080 pixel artboard. And I'm going to make it a little bit larger. And we're going to get going. So we're going to start simple by designing a gauge or two. And then we're going to design a few additional elements. And we'll talk about some guidelines that Apple currently has, things like you know, SF symbols or San Francisco font typefaces and things like that. I'm going to start by just setting the artboard color and I'm going to pop into my appearance and we're going to switch it over to a linear gradient. And of course, this is optional, but it kind of helps us set the stage for the gauges. And one thing that I noticed in the keynote, if I'm not mistaken, is depending on the time of day, and you see this with other cars as well. Let me just set this. Something around a little bit darker, almost like a, a dusky look, maybe. There we go. And you see this with other car uh, smart screens and what navigation systems is based on the time of day. You'll have a dark mode and you'll have a light mode, right? So it changes dynamically. All right, so we have our background set. And of course, we, add, we can add stars back there and things like, you know what, maybe let's... Originally, what I was going to do is I'm going to grab a rectangle, drag one out. I was going to switch over to Finder, grab an image of stars, pop that in there, boop, and then set the blend mode to either screen, which gives you something like this, or color dodge. 
very similar but different result and maybe drop the opacity. You can definitely do that. But one thing that just popped into my mind is a plugin that I've used fairly frequently, and it's called the Confetti plugin. So if we zoom in here, we're just going to create a little tiny circle, right? And if I zoom out, you can see it's a quite a small circle. Now, with that circle selected, we're going to get a bit crazy here. I'm going to go to my plugins panel at the bottom left hand corner, and I'm going to go into my Confetti plugin, which I already have open. And if you don't have any plugins, definitely hit the plus button at the top right hand corner to install plugins. I'm going to pop open Confetti, and here you can choose the number of columns and rows, and that's going to really determine how many of these objects are duplicated. Now, if I were to simply do three and four, it wouldn't give me too many, right? I'll get to that in a second. We can randomize the opacity, which is great for stars because if you ever look up in the night sky, there are stars that are closer. And by close, I mean like, you know, four light years away. There are stars that are much further, 30,000, 50,000, million light years away, right? So the, the opacity, the brightness is going to definitely change. So let's randomize it to, now I don't remember if higher or lower is what we want, but let's start at 80%. Rotation is not going to really matter in this case because it's a circle, right? We could create a star with the polygon tool, which would be interesting. Maybe we'll do that. And then randomize a scale. We'll do that as well, right? Ooh, we could also enable depth of field. That's interesting. Uh, so if we go ahead and create, we have a few stars that are kind of scattered. And that's only because we have three by four, right? For the columns and rows. But if we bump this up to like 15 by 15, okay, 14, fine. Right now we have a lot more stars and we can continue kind of optimizing this. We can drop this down to maybe 10% for the scale. Let's drop the opacity and see if that helps. Right now we have some cool stars and we can, you know, select them all and experiment with the different blend modes, opacity, all sorts of fun stuff. A little bit of a side tip, but, uh, Kind of helpful. Let me just go back one, very quickly before we get. I know a lot of you are probably. I can't even see the chat still. But let's create polygon, and we're gonna make a little bit of a star shape. Maybe we'll do how many four sides? Maybe something like this, right? Little star. There we go. Fancy. And now, if we select both of these, let's see if this works. We can do the same thing. We should have. There we go. We have some stars, right? We can add lens flares, we can add all sorts of fun stuff. And of course, I'm going to make sure to group all of these elements because there's a lot of stuff. All right. Anyways, a little bit of a side tip. Now let's get on to some of the good stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create our first gauge. So I'm going to grab my ellipse tool, shortcut key E, and drag one out just like that. Pop that in there. And if you remember or if you watched the uh, presentation, the gauges kind of blend in with the background, but they don't blend in so much that you can't really see it, right? So what we're going to do is we can either set, let's say, a background color, because right now we're designing for the darker mode. So we can either set a background color of black and maybe drop the opacity a little bit. But let me actually switch over to Safari for just a moment. You might notice over here, you know, behind it, there might be a map or there might be other information back there. And if you simply drop the opacity and there's a lot of information, let me, where is XD, right? If there was a lot of information back here and you were to simply drop the opacity, it might be too distracting a little bit. So that's where a background blur really comes into play. So I'm going to turn a background blur on. I'm going to blur it completely to about 50. We can set the brightness at zero or we can even drop it a little bit more. But what I think is going to be the important thing is to grab that uh, effect opacity slider right at the bottom, right down here, and increase that. That's going to bring back some of the fill color, which in this case is pure black. But if it was a gradient or if it was a red or any other color, it would slowly bring that color back in, right? So we'll leave it right about 50%. That looks pretty good. And just as an example, if I were to grab an image, right? Let's say I grab an image of a map. Boop, pop that in there and move it on back. With the background blur, no matter where I put it, it's still not bad, right? It's very subtle. But if we were to reverse that and go back to dropped opacity, right? Now it's very distracting. And 
if there are if there's text over top of it, it's going to be very difficult to see that, right? That's why background blur in this case is very helpful. All right, now on the inside of this gauge, we want two elements. Well, we want a few more, but we want two main ones: the the progress or the the actual speed meter, and then how much or how fast you're going. That that kind of border can change as you know the speed is going up or whatever it might be. So what we want to do is want to have another ellipse on the inside. We want to bring it on in a little bit. So I'm going to duplicate this current shape. Command and Control D. Now we don't want a background blur in this case, and we really don't. Are we're not really worried about the fill because we want to focus on a border. So I'm going to bring it on in, and I'm going to turn the fill off, and I'm going to set a border. So we'll set the border at white, and we really want to bump this up. Let's try about I don't know 20. 26 looks pretty good. You can even go a little bit higher, maybe 30. We'll see what that looks like. And very quickly, I'm going to refresh Behance and oh, we might have, aha. All right, we have chat. Let me actually just move the chat pod over to the other side. A little CSS hacking over here. All right, so we have people in here. This is amazing. Okay, I can actually I can actually see all of you. So Philip and Laura and Wade and Tanya and Eric, great to see all of you. Samuel and Philip, who says X XD is so interesting. Jan says, "Wow, chat is available." I know, isn't that crazy? It was so weird because it was just working a second ago. On, um, I don't even know if my background music go because my stream deck is also gone. There's background music. There. Yeah, it was working a second ago when I was watching Andrew's stream. And then all of a sudden it just stopped. And I think I had a blip in my internet and just, I don't know, something happened. Technology is weird. Anyways, so if I miss any questions, definitely retype them because it looks like there was a lot of chat going. So we have our border, right? But what we want is we want a bit of a cutout in the border. So essentially, you know, we want this bottom section to be hidden. Now, of course, we, we can do exactly this, right? We can use something like our you know ellipse and cut out a hole in this border or what we can do is we can use our dashes and our gaps right so over here within the properties inspector once again we have our size which we just adjusted then we have our dash and we have our gap right now what we want to do in order to kind of set the border and slowly increase it is we want to really increase our gap so you're going to notice if I start bumping this up, the space in between the segments gets larger and larger and larger. And to help you see that, I'm going to set the uh, cap to round, right? So we have these dots. And this also helps create, you know, dots on a circle, right? But what we want to do is want to take this gap basically all the way until none of these dots are visible. And sometimes it's a 1,000, sometimes it's 2,000. Or you can just go like 9,001 over 9,000, right? And just really bump that up. It doesn't matter once you get past that point where the dots are not visible, it doesn't matter how far you go up because now we can go into our dash and we can start increasing it, right? Now you can just sit here and just kind of hold down your shift key and hold down your up key and just kind of keep going, right? Or if you, you know, you can experiment with the number. So like 1500, for example, will get you pretty close. Now, of course, depending on the size of your gauge, because you're going to notice if we increase or decrease the size of this, right, it's going to respect the dashes and the gaps. So your your values may change. Megan is saying, I love the dash and gap trick. You did, used it so much since you showed us on that exercise app. Oh, yeah. I think yeah, Megan says a million years ago, but that was, um, it was a while ago. We introduced uh, animated dashes and gaps. We've had dashes and gaps for a while, but now you can animate them using auto animate, which is even cooler, right? So we have this shape, but of course we want that hole and the cutout on the bottom. So in this case, we can just rotate it, right? And if you want to make sure that it lines up perfectly, drag a guide from the top and rotate it like that. And if you need to, you can always adjust the dash just a little bit like that. There we go. Look at that. Now, one thing you might be asking is, that's not it, that's not what I want to show. Boop, there we go. One thing you might be asking, and you can't really see it on this particular example, 
but some of the previews that Apple showed, the border in the back that we just worked on was colorful. It had, you know, green and purple and had all these different colors. Obviously not very bright because that would be way too distracting, but it was a nice gradient. And it, since we're working with a border right now, if I were to hop into the color picker for the border, you're not going to notice that the gradient picker that you typically see with a fill. And that's because XD at the moment does not support gradients for borders. I know I would love that too, maybe in the future, but at the moment it does not. So the workaround for this, because this particular shape is never going to change, it's always going to be like this. We can go ahead at this point and outline the stroke, which will take your border and turn it into a fill. So under the object menu, down to path, and then outline stroke. Again, it's going to take that border and convert it into a fill. And now, because it's a fill, we can open up the color picker, switch it over to the linear gradient. Now I'm going to go ahead and set my colors. Let's bring this down at the bottom here. I'm going to shove this over to the left, and maybe the left color will be some sort of like a greenish blue. Now, again, we don't want to go very vibrant colors for this particular border because we're going to have a shape on top of it that's going to allow us to see either how fast we're going or you know how many miles are left in the, the tank or whatever it might be, whatever this gauge is it's for, right? So we're going to go a little bit desaturated, a little bit darker. There we go. And then on the right-hand side, we might want to go maybe a purplish. purplish pink. And then maybe in the middle, we can always add a bit of blue if you wanted to, right? Something like that. There we go, right? So we have this nice border going around the side. Now, one thing I completely neglected to do is in a moment, we're going to need another border that goes around. But this one, we're going to want to be able to adjust that dash, right? So I'm actually going to copy this for a second. I'm going to undo this is why it's always good to think ahead. I'm going to undo before I outline that stroke. I'm going to duplicate this shape just so I have one that's not outlined. And then on this one here, I'm going to re-outline that stroke. And then just paste that appearance back in, right? So now I'm going to go ahead and unhide this one. And this is the one where we want to adjust the dash. So this is going to show us how fast we're going, for example. So I'm going to bring this on back. Again, you can enter a value inside of your properties inspector. But I'll leave it right about here, right? Perfect. Now, we could just leave it at white. It doesn't look too bad. The contrast is nice. Very easy to look at and tell exactly what it is. But it might be a little bit too contrasty, right? Especially if you're driving at night, you might not want these very light elements kind of blaring your face. So we may want it to blend a little bit with those colors in the background. Now, this is where blend modes could come into play. And what's nice about using a blend mode in this case is no matter what the color is in the background, it's going to highlight that color really nicely. So if we do something like soft light, it's not bad, but if I preview this, it's probably a little bit too blendy, right? Is that a word, blendy? I don't know. It blends a little bit too much. So I think in this case, something like overlay could work. Because overlay, especially when you're working with colors, it really emphasizes those colors. So if I preview this one more time, it's a little bit better, right? And as you, you're going to notice, as I increase this dash value, it's really highlighting all the colors back there, which is kind of fun. Now, of course, you could do something simple like just dropping the opacity. That works as well. But I kind of like the way overlay works and looks. So I think we're going to run with it. All right. We have our borders, we have our meters, we have whatever you want to call it in place. I'm going to group these elements. I'm going to call this speed. There we go. And we have our container in the background. Perfect. And then we want on top, we want an actual text layer that shows how fast we're going, right? So I'm going to grab my text tool, shortcut key T, and we'll just do something like 40, right? Gonna make it nice and large and then in terms of the typeface if you're just designing this for 
personal projects or your own car operating system, one, don't copy apples, right? But you can use basically any typeface that you want within reason, right? You probably don't want to go for something like Blenny, which it's a fun typeface in some circumstances, but when you're when you're dealing with a, a car interface and you have a driver who's obviously not staring at this element the entire time, they're going to be looking down very intermittently, right? They want to be able to look down, see the number, and know exactly how fast they're going. This, not going to do it, right? So stay away from display typefaces for experiences like this. Now, if you're designing for Apple's uh, car OS, you'll want to use their San Francisco typeface, which you can download if you just Google SF uh, Compact or whatever. It's on Apple's developer site. And in the particular screenshots that they showed, they were using the SF Pro Rounded typeface, I believe it was. You can also try the SF Compact Rounded, right? Either one, they're very similar. The color was white, but the black weight probably isn't going to do. It's a little bit too thick, so we'll probably want to go for something like semi-bold. Bold, possibly, but I think semi-bold looks pretty good. It's also thick enough that a driver can look down very quickly and tell what it is, right? So either SF Pro Rounded or the Compact Rounded will do. Right? That looks pretty good. And then below, we want a little bit of subtext, right? That's going to say something like miles per hour or wh whatever it is you're dealing with, miles per gallon, or uh, there's a lot of different things you can use. But we were using the, let me make this nice and small. We were using the rounded typeface for this particular element down here, right? Or the, the larger element at the top. However, when you're making a rounded typeface and font a lot smaller, it's going to be difficult to read. Very similar to using a display typeface, right? So in this case, we'll probably want to switch it back to our SF Pro. They have a lot of different versions. SF Pro, display, rounded text. Some of them look very similar. You can see text, right? And then we have our rounded, we have display, and then Pro. They're really not that different, um, but you know, there it is. They also have a UI version. So you have, they have SF UI text. I honestly don't know what the difference is. They're very subtle differences, but either one will do. And then maybe we will, eh, regular looks pretty good. Maybe medium, medium's not bad. And then I can drop the opacity just a little bit so it's not too blurry, right? There we go, perfect. And then finally, we're gonna have one more text layer down at the bottom, and maybe this one will convert it into kilometers per hour for all the non-Americans out there. That's white, that is white. And then this one I'm gonna drop a little bit. There we go. All right. So we have the start of our gauge looking pretty good. Now, we could leave it at this, but there, there could be other elements that you might want to include on a gauge like this. You know, maybe you're driving a traditional gas car and you might want a little bit of a meter showing how much gas you have left. And that's where you can reuse some of these elements, right? So we have this element here that we can definitely reuse. So I'm gonna copy it and paste it. Let me just switch over back to normal. And instead of moving this out of the circle, which is definitely not going to line up very well, as you can see, I'm actually going to resize it. And as you can tell when I'm doing that, it lines up much better, right? Because it resizes to the size of that outer circle, and then a little bit more so that it kind of hugs that circle quite nicely, right? And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to maybe drop the size a little bit. Let's try about 24. Let's drop the dash. So this is going to be the entire gas gauge or whatever you might want to call it. And this is going to be the entire, right? Very similar to the border on the outside, or I guess the entire border on the inside. And this one, I'm going to drop the opacity a little bit and then duplicate, bump the opacity up and oops, and then bring this on down. 
right? So now we have our, we can have full and empty, and then we can have a little gas can right down here at the bottom. So if I grab my text, again, shortcut key T, it's pressing the wrong button. We'll do something like that. Maybe we'll bump this up to about semi-bold or even possibly bold. That could do. I'm going to rotate it a little bit. Something like that. Drag this one down here. This is going to be E for empty. And then just in case some people may not know what, you know, the E and the F and that meter kind of indicate, an icon always helps, right? And if you go over to Apple's developer site, they have a beta for the SF Symbols library. And they also have SF Symbols 3, um, which you can, which is a public release, but you can download the beta for SF Symbols 4. And that includes all the new icons for their newer operating systems that are coming out. So um, I know I don't know if it includes all the car car CarPlay, right? Or is it Car OS? I think it's CarPlay. I don't know. All the car operating system icons. I don't know if it includes all of those, considering that's still very very much active in development. But let's see. Uh, gas. Yeah, it may not. Uh, Oil? No. It may not have those particular elements just yet. But they have a lot. They have a lot of uh, icons that are used in their operating system. Maybe I'm using the wrong, maybe transportation, maybe, maybe it's in here. No. Oh, wait, there it is. Fuel pump. There we go. Fuel pump. And now, I won't be able to copy it because I don't have the right font. Something got messed up with my... Jan says CarPlay. Thank you. Uh, yeah, something got messed up with my fonts as I was installing this, so it's not coming over properly the way I want. Um, but what you can do instead is, oops, what did I just do? Oh, wrong, wrong doc. Hop over to your plugins, go over to icons for design. Thank you, Laura, for posting that link and look up something like gas. There it is, gas pump and material. But if you're designing for uh, I believe Android has uh, Android Auto or Android, some sort of car operating system as well. Fuel, oops, fuel, nope, okay. So it looks like it's just these particular icons, but you know, this one from Awesome looks pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and place that in this area here. Again, just to really indicate that this is your gas gate. Beautiful. All right, so our first gauge is complete. Now I'm gonna make sure to select all these elements and deselect the stars, place them all into a group and call this gauge. Did I spell that right? Probably not. Gauge, something like that, right? There we go. Thank you, Wade, as well. All right, so with one of these complete, now we can actually just use some of these elements to create additional gauges. So if I were to maybe duplicate one over. Now, what you're going to notice is because some of the elements are still border based, as we resize down, we're going to have a little bit of squishiness or, uh, you know, things are going to get a little bit messed up, as you can see, right? But it's not messed up to the extent that we can't fix it. All we really have to do is bring back the size so it matches. We can drop this a little bit, or I can keep it somewhere up there. And then maybe this one might not have the gas gauge, right? Delete all of these. And maybe this one is, you know, miles per gallon. We can keep it at 40. And then MPG. And I might probably want to grab that icon one more time because down here, what we might want to do is, I don't know what half of this stuff means to be honest, but I know in the screenshots they had like 207 miles, and then they had an arrow pointing to the right, and then they had another gas icon, right? So the point is, once you have these initial elements created, it's very easy to reuse them for other gauges that you might be displaying on your, your particular experience, right? Now, there are additional elements that, let's see if we have over here. <laughs> 
you can't see many of them that are that were displayed in the presentation. But you know, on this section down here, they also had uh, elements that were a little bit straighter, you know, for navigation and for uh, speed and other things. And then you have all these, you know, kind of cards that display additional information like your current trip, what your calendar looks like, air quality, all these fun things, right? So let's design a few additional elements. Now, one of them was the Northwest indication or the uh, direction, right? And that one in particular was really made with just a bunch of circle or, or rounded rectangle. So in that case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab either our line or something like a rectangle. We can draw one out like this. And I think in the example that I saw, it was almost like a bright green. Turn off the border. I'm gonna round out the corners quite a bit. We have something that looks like that. Maybe I'm gonna shift the color a little bit, a little bit more blue, right? And then knowing that there, there are going to be a lot of these shapes kind of going across this element, one easy way to do it is using a repeat grid. So Command and Control R, Make them nice and squishy. Not too bad. Let me add a few more. And that looks pretty good. Now I might want to squish them down just a little bit. And one of the great benefits of using a repeat grid is all you have to do is really edit one of them. So if I dive in here, bring this up, it's going to edit all of them. Just like that, right? Now, there are a few more elements, obviously, on something like this, right? Because we're dealing with direction, we might want to display all the different, or not all of them, but you know, a good handful of the directions, like 270 degrees, or 300 degrees, or whatever it might be. We want to probably display the direction that we're going. So like 300, in the example is 336 degrees northwest. A lot of numbers going on. And there was some sort of a marker, right? So in terms of the actual text layers, that should be very simple, right? So we'll do the big one first, 336. Now degrees on the Mac, you can do Alter Option, Shift, and then number eight, which will give you a little degree symbol, which is wonderful. And then Northwest. Pop that there. And then for the degrees at the top, the ones that will display you know, several of them, what we're going to do, we'll start with something like 60 degrees. And these are gonna be much smaller. We can possibly even bump down the weight a little bit. You don't wanna to go too much because we're shrinking this text layer down quite a bit. If you were to pop it at, let's say, thin or even light, it's gonna be a little bit difficult to see, especially going back to what we are talking about earlier, an experience that's gonna be looked at very briefly. So we'll keep it at somewhere around medium. So we'll do 60, we'll do maybe 30, I'm not too worried about the spacing at the moment, and you'll see why in a moment. We'll do zero. Oops. 330. 300, and then 270. Now, as a quick disclaimer, if some of this doesn't make sense, if even if you know many of you are car people, I'm mainly basing these designs off of Apple's screenshots. And I did have someone reach out on Twitter saying that one of the gauges made zero sense uh, in the YouTube video that I posted. And again, I'm just basing it off what Apple has released. So if it doesn't make sense, Apple's fault. <laughs> I love blaming other companies. Um, but again, but as, as another disclaimer, what Apple showed off is very, very, very early on in development. So there might be errors with it. So don't blame Apple too much. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place 270 on the left-hand side. I'm gonna place 60 on the right-hand side. Then I'm gonna select all the other degrees in between, holding down shift and clicking. And then at the top right-hand corner, I can use my alignment and distribution options. And this one here will allow me to distribute all of them horizontally. So it's gonna look at the one at the very far left, the very far right, and then evenly space everything out in between. Ooh, there we go. So with that, we have our directions widget. Now, one more thing that it did have is it had a little bit of a uh, 
like an arrow of some sort. So it had something like this element here. I'm going to copy it and actually paste it outside. But it was a little bit higher up. It was white. And then there was a bit of a point at the top. So in this case, what I can do is I can double click and maybe just move this up. Bring this in a little bit. And now we have... There we go. Wonderful. I might want to actually bring these text layers down a touch. And they might still be a eh, I was gonna say they might be a little bit too large but I think for a quick glance I think they might be okay degrees and bring them down just a touch right there we go all right that looks pretty good now, another element that was present on some of the screenshots is over to the right-hand side, there may be a very quick preview of the directions that you're going in, right? Um, or or your, your next direction, for example. So in this case, it might be something like, and this is a pretty simple element here. Round out those corners. They will change this to a nice bl like light blue. I don't want to go too light or too dark because then it's going to blend in with that background a little bit. Right? We're also going to have two elements here. This one might drop in opacity a little bit. This could be another opportunity to use a background blur just in case there are elements in the background that might be too distracting. So if I turn a background blur on, blur it, I can bring back some of that blue if I wanted to just a little bit. Don't want to go too much. There we go. And then we might want, you know, on the left-hand side, there might be an icon to indicate which direction you're going to go, left, right, straight, whatever it might be. And then on the right, it might display, you know, how far until that change, right? So maybe this will be 24th Street. Maybe I'll bump this up to sim. And again, on the on left-hand side, we might want an icon. Now, I would typically go to the SF symbols library, grab one of those and bring them in. But again, I can't copy anything for some reason. I'll figure that out after, after the stream. Uh, let's say turn right. Nope. Right. That's a lot of different icons, especially when you search something like right, right? Right. If you've watched my stream before and you've seen me use the uh, Icons for Design plugin, you know I absolutely love this plugin. But the one thing I don't love about it is that it puts the icons at the top left-hand corner of the artboard at times. Drives me crazy. All right. There we go. So we're making progress. We have our widget over to the right, which is our upcoming direction. We have this, uh, I don't even know what you call it. Is there an actual name? Someone in the chat will know. Is there an actual name for something like this? There probably is. There must be, right? We have that, whatever it's called. And we have our gauges that we've started to design. now. Another thing that you may have seen in the example are those little cards over on this side. And these aren't as important as the actual directions and speedometer and all those fun things. But in some cases, you may definitely need some of these controls. You know, being able to open your home garage, seeing your music control or your, you know, what's, what song is playing now and next and all that stuff. And this could also be used to display upcoming directions as well. So we'll do something like that and we'll see what that looks like. So if I go ahead and grab my rectangle, draw one out. Now these will probably be fixed in sides, right? So we're not gonna worry too much about padding and stacks because we probably want all these cards to be the exact same size. I'm gonna round up the corners a little bit. Let's try about 32, looks pretty accurate. We might even go to 40. And very similar to our gauge over here to the left, we may want, you know, very similar background blur, but it might be a little bit different, right? Eh, 
I mean, it might not be that bad. They look pretty consistent, actually. And looking at it now, it looks like this one might be a little bit too dark. Oh, I grabbed the wrong element. Copy. Paste. There we go. It might be a little bit too dark. So maybe I'll bring this back up to about zero. Bring this down just a touch. Let's try about 40. That looks pretty good. And I'll apply that on here. That's well. There we go. All right, so for this one, we're gonna want to start off with a bit of a header, right? So in this case, it might be current trip. Let's make this large. We do have our San Francisco Pro text typeface selected. And for the header, in the example, it was a very light blue, right? Let's try medium. And left align it, place it somewhere in this area here. We will go back and make sure everything aligns up um, really nicely. And then down beside or below to the left, uh, there are icons that kind of kick off each section or each whatever it might be, right? And in this case, it is the duration. So we probably want to go to our icons and look up something like stopwatch, maybe. There it goes, the icon's flying away somewhere. Place this one right about here. Now this, again, this is not the official icon. If we were to go to the SF symbols and look up something like stopwatch, there is the official one, but I can't grab it. Can I copy it, copy symbol, would that work? No. I can copy the image. Will that work? Not an SVG. All right. So we're going to stick with that. And then we're going to do zero hours, 40 minutes. And this is going to be the duration. So I'm going to change this to white. And then right below, I'm going to let users know that this is the duration. Now here we might, let's keep it at medium, but we're going to drop the size a little bit, maybe even more. And then maybe drop either the opacity or just drop this in color a little bit. Either one should work. You don't want to go too far so that users can't read it. That could potentially do. The icon is definitely standing out. It's a little bit too thick in terms of the border. And this one's not a border-based icon. So I can't do much to change it. Although I could go over to Nucleo. I do have some icons here. Stopwatch. And something like this isn't too bad. This is from Font Awesome. I think this one might work a little bit. Yeah, I think that's going to work a little bit better. All right. And then we're going to want a line underneath that kind of swivels across here. There we go, we have our duration. And I'm gonna group these elements and then we can start working on our next. Now to make it easy, I can just duplicate this down a little bit and this will be our miles per gallon. So 32 miles per gallon and we're gonna want, actually we do have our gas pump or gas, whatever this thing is called over here. go and then we're going to want one more and this is going to be our distance so 54 miles there we go and then we want one more icon let me actually go back to here and what would this be called distance probably not no path maybe yeah maybe the Probably not exactly what we're looking for, but it might work for now, right? Yeah. Hmm. 
maybe directions? That's about the same thing, right? Yeah. That'll do for now. Oops, wrong. Eric is saying, Icons for Design doesn't seem to like text. If you have, for example, a rectangle selected, the icon gets placed right next to it. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how Icons for Design determines where it places the icons. Um, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, XD plugins do support drag and drop. So they could have built it. And that was, you know, we introduced that after Icons for Design was released. So they could theoretically release an update that allows you to drag an icon exactly where you want it, um, or just update the logic so that it places it maybe in the middle of your viewport. So if I'm like looking at this right now, it would just place it right here. Or if I have an object selected, it would place it somewhere in the vicinity rather than up at the top left corner of the artboard. And what's weird is sometimes it will do that, right? So there it placed it there. I don't know why, right? I don't know. If anyone knows the developers of Icons for Design, I suppose I could probably find out and reach out to them, but um, yeah. So close to perfection. So close. But, it, you know, relatively, it's a, it's a relatively minor thing. You still have access to, I don't know how many icons, but uh, thousands and thousands of open source icons, which work great, right? All right, so we have our first card, and it looks fancy. And then from here, you can definitely very easily kind of... Oops, let me make sure to group all of this. All this card, and then this would be trip. And then very similar to what we did with the gauge, we can very easily duplicate this card and create additional information. Again, calendars and air quality, location, all sorts of different things, right? Now, at some point in a project like this, you're going to want to display because right now we just have a bunch of things kind of floating all over the place but we're going to want to make it look a little bit pretty right and very similar to something like this where you're going to have a, want a, a steering wheel you're going to want to display maybe a background behind it right andres is asking where do you get those icons so the icons that so well, some of the icons that i've been using i oops wrong one again i grabbed them from the icons for design plugin and all of these icons within this plugin are open source, so you can use them in your projects as you wish, right? But some of the icons I did grab from Nucleo, which is a third-party icon manager. I do have a bunch of icon sets that I've either purchased or were given. Um, so any icons that are not available in Icons for Design, I do have in here. But ideally, in a project like this, you would use the icons from Apple's SF Symbols library. There's a bang upstairs. I think it was my dog jumped on something. Um, yeah, ideally you would use these icons here, right? But like I showed earlier, I have some mismatched fonts, so I can't uh, can't use those. Anyways, back to what I was talking about. We're going to want to be able to display in kind of a nice, presentable fashion. So let me create one more artboard. And this is going to be another web 1920 by 1080. Of course, depending on the presentation, it might be a lot longer, it might be shorter. But we're gonna want some sort of a steering wheel, right? And we're gonna want our similar gauges. So we might want our screen to be something like this, right? We're gonna add a little bit of room at the top for a background. So this will be our screen and we can probably copy the gradient, paste it there. And maybe we'll, you know, maybe we'll paste the gradient here as well. I know it looks a little bit strange, but we're gonna do something similar and maybe we'll actually just drop this color a little bit. There we go. Alexander from London. Great to see you. And I'm going to add maybe a little bit of a border on the inside. Something like... Something like that, right? And then, one more thing we can potentially do is add an actual map back here, right? Just to make it look a little bit re more real. So I'm going to duplicate this shape. And over back in Finder, I do have some maps. I'm going to grab 
let's say this map here, there's a lot of different maps. This probably isn't the best example. We probably want to do something more like this or something a little bit more traditional like this, especially for a dark version. But I'll grab something like this just for fun. Boop, pop it on in there. And I want it to blend in a little bit. So we did have our screen that we created, right? I'm going to move this behind the screen and then use this screen and experiment with the blend modes a little bit. Soft light, hard light's not too bad. It kind of blends in quite nicely, right? So we can do something like that. Looks okay. But of course, we want a steering wheel on top of it to kind of show what the screen looks like behind the steering wheel. Now, I do have over here an image from Adobe Stock, right? And this is the one straight from Adobe Stock. So nothing has been changed with this, right? Now, obviously, there's a bit of a problem here. We can't see behind. Now, depending on the image, you can try to work in a blend mode like multiply, to, you know, potentially screened again, depending on the image. But because it's not really ideal in this case, what we can do is edit in Photoshop, which is going to launch Photoshop directly from Adobe XD. And a lot of things, oh, I just installed an update, so it's going to verify it for the first time. And I have a lot of things running, so it's going to take a second or two. Plus the first time launch after an update. There we go. And in this case, hopefully as fall goes well, I can simply remove the background. Look at that. And now if I go ahead and press save, command and control S, go back to XD, bang, match, right? So I can place this somewhere about here. And then I can start grabbing some of these elements like our gauge and place it right there. Now you definitely want to, you know, kind of finesse this into place because you want to be able to see your entire gauge. Something like that, right? And I'm thinking this shape, this map in the background is a little bit distracting, so we'll just drop it a touch. There we go. And I can also grab some of these elements. Let's, whoops. Let me just copy that one and paste this in here. And we're going to copy this one as well. Grab that. Place this in here. Now this one, I think for, you know, just to make sure that we can really tell the difference between this gauge and this one, we might want to dive in here and just change maybe the color of the gradient. So maybe on the left-hand side, it might be, you know, a little bit more green. And then on the right, it might be something like that. Maybe we don't need that one, right? And because we use that additional border on top of it with the blend mode set to overlay, we don't have to do anything to that shape, right? It automatically uh, changes because of that blend mode. But, if, you know, if we want to, we can always drop this a little bit. Right, and there we go. Move that behind our steering wheel. Perfect. And things are looking pretty fancy, right? I might want to bring some of those stars. Why not, right? Place that in the background. Adjust this a little bit. Just to give it a little bit of a different look. There we go. So we're getting somewhere, right? So once again, once we have all these elements in place, then you can start really using them for presentation purposes. And one thing I should probably mention that I did not mention, bad Howard, I am going to, let me actually get rid of this big gauge in the middle. Once you are, you know, if, if you're in a situation where you're designing all of your elements on a separate artboard, then you're going to be using those elements in a presentation or some sort of design system it's probably a good idea to convert them into components. So this element here I have selected, I'm going to press the plus button within my properties inspector. Oop. And this is going to be converted into our main component. So if I now copy this and paste it over here, just like I did before, right? And I want to make a change or maybe even someone on my team makes a change to 
the main components, right? So if I go over here and maybe change the color, for example, maybe the color on the right is looking a bit funky. You want to change it to maybe more of a blue, maybe this color over here, we're going to change to, I don't know what it might, maybe this one over here is red because it's really fast over there, right? Whatever it might be, right? And then we'll change the border. And maybe we'll bump this up to 65, right? And if we hop over here, it automatically updated. So components, definitely use them, especially if you're gonna be creating presentations and using these elements across multiple designs. All right, that's gonna wrap things up for me for today. Big thank you to everyone who has tuned in. I will be, uh, no masterclass next week, but after our holiday shutdown, I will be back with more masterclasses. We're approaching number 100, which is really exciting. Thanks again, everyone, and I will see you all next time.